This beautiful little girl is six-year-old Isabella Ariel Kalua. She was last seen on Sunday, September 12th, 2021, in her Waimanalo, Hawaii home. Her parents put her to bed around nine, and when they got up the next morning, she was gone. She is 3'3", Hawaiian, weighs 46 pounds, has brown hair and brown eyes, and was last seen wearing a black hoodie, black leggings, colorful socks, and Nike slides with pink bottoms. Please help spread the word. Someone knows something. It's time to help bring Ariel home. Hey everybody and welcome to True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. This is Katie Weaver and I'm here with my sister, co-host and partner in crime, Christy Brower. Hello. Hello. Hey everybody. How's it going? It's, it's good. Uh, I'm kind of blown away. It's already Monday. I know. This weekend went by super fast. But I, Yes. Halloween festivities 100% kicked my ass. Yes. Me too. <laughs> too old for this shit, man. <laughs> uh, me too. I we drank absinthe, which is you know the drink of choice for witches. Uh, I don't think I saw the green fairy, but oh my gosh, I have been so sick today, <laughs> so sick. Yeah, it's not fun. Not but fun see, at I'm all. at the age now where I'm not sure if it was the absinthe or the pizza that made me this sick. <laughs> right. <laughs> I hear that. Yeah, but. We did have fun. Hopefully you guys had a fun Halloween as well. Yeah. And now it's time to get back into it. Yes, it is. Before we get into our case, though, we probably ought to go ahead and have a word from our sponsor. You know we should. And I, you know, there's some things going on in this world that need our attention. Christy, have you heard about the fires in Utsnutsistan? No. What happened? Well, men have been shaving their boys with cheap razors, and it's caused so much razor burn that the whole country is burning. Whoa, I had no idea. If only they knew about the Lawnmower 4.0 from Manscaped.com. Right? It's all they had to do. And it's easy. You can get 20% off and free shipping with the code True Crime Paranormal at manscaped.com. And that's free worldwide shipping. 20% off with free worldwide Even shipping at manscaped.com. Yeah. And use code True Crime Paranormal. Experience premium, premium grooming with Manscaped. Absolutely. There you go. Yeah. Well, our case today is a little reminiscent of our little missing darling in Australia, but this is a missing child in Hawaii. Mm. And this little girl went missing on the 12th of September. So she went missing about the same time that Gabby Petito hysteria arrived. Yes, yeah, she and did. There has not been very much press on her case, and there is a real firestorm swirling around it and I will tell you why. So let's get into the basics first. So her name is Isabella Kalua, but that's only been her name for about a year. She has been adopted. Oh, okay. Her previous name was Ariel. And so you, the, part of the confusion is we're hearing her called two different things. Okay. And this even really threw some of her family off that didn't know she was missing. Some of her birth family that didn't know she was missing are seeing this beautiful little girl in the news that's missing with Ariel's face on her, you mm -hmm. know, going, wait a minute, this is, this is Ariel. Well, now it's Isabella. The Ariel anyway, had a name change at, 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 uh, at adoption. adoption, apparently. Yes. Okay. So it, it's caused some confusion uh, moving forward, but Ariel uh, has been adopted. Uh, it sounds like there has been some uh, drug issues and incarceration issues with bio mom and dad. Okay. And there are three siblings 
three little girls, uh, two of which have also been adopted by the birth family, or I'm sorry, by the adoptive family, the Kaluas, mm -hmm. and the Kaluas are set to adopt the baby uh, next month. Oh, wow. So that will get important here in a few minutes. Oh, yeah. So when she went missing, she apparently, they went, they put her to bed on September 12th that evening. Mm -hmm. And when they woke up the next morning, she was gone. They said that they woke up at five, she was gone. They looked around the house, checked everybody else's beds. You know, she was gone. They called the police at 6 a.m. And the search has been on for her ever since. The parents are telling uh, the police and the press that she had a habit of slipping outside during the night and sleeping in the yard. Mm, okay. And that they believe that she did that and was either abducted or just wandered off. Okay. There was no Amber Alert because the police didn't have any proof that she had been abducted. And that apparently, at least in Hawaii, is a part of the... Uh, the shtick is that they have to have some idea a child was abducted in order to issue an Amber Alert, or at least well, that's what they're saying. she's six and she's missing from her parents' home. I mean, what else would she be? Yeah, agreed. I mean, if she wasn't like next door at the neighbor's house, then... Right. Ooh, I do not like that at we all. We have to assume that there's a likelihood of foul play, right? Yeah. Right. So... They searched uh, the area extensively from September 12th until September 21st and found the only thing they found was a backpack in a ditch that, that could be substantial and maybe not. Uh, there's not much about that, but that is one thing that they ha have said that they found was a backpack in a ditch. Okay, but I mean, wouldn't the family have identified a backpack that belonged to her? Well, the family is not talking. Mm -hmm. And the police are struggling to get all family members in for uh, to talk. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's some issues here because they're struggling to get full cooperation. Uh, the rest of the children have also now been removed from the home. Now, the adoptive family's attorneys are saying that that is standard procedure when there's a missing child and you have foster kids in the home. The problem with that is they're not all foster kids. I was going to say, wait a adopted. minute, they're not all foster kids. And so they wouldn't, that is true if a child is still in the system. Mm -hmm. That is not true if a child has been adopted. That child is no longer under any authority from the state. Yeah. So there's more to this than that. It, there seems to be. Uh, the FBI has also come on board. The hard well, I mean, part missing child they always they are yeah. always supposed to yeah so the other siblings are ages one three and twelve okay and so what again, about that 12 year old that's not a biological sibling uh i believe it is yeah okay mm -hmm. one three and twelve okay so it gets really sticky because the bio family is furious and very upset because it's a really tough one because it seems like, at least from what the bio family says, and of course they're coming at it from their lens, that uh, CPS has been uh, quite uh, aggressive and unfair with their family. Uh, for example, bio mm -hmm. or uh, paternal dads mother is a social worker on another island okay. and would have gladly taken these children in but wasn't given any opportunity to do so uh, apparently they did live for a time with mom's mom and her boyfriend was in a terrible car accident and at that time they deemed that she was uh, unable to take care of the kids at that point because she was be too busy taking care of him, mm -hmm. uh, but other family members as well. So, you know, and again, mm -hmm. these are, you know, this is obviously a family that's had a, a, a bad go with the system. And so it, it sounds it, like it. I mean, the, the thing is, and I mean, we're in Idaho. Yeah. And so the state, the, the laws are not all the same, mm -hmm. but here the state 
definitely always looks at family members, but the vetting process is heavy. Yeah. Because if there are family that have legal problems, drug problems, that kind of thing, it's difficult to be sure that other family members don't also have those issues. You know what I mean? Yeah, for Um, sure. So, you know, I mean, honestly, here in Idaho, this priority is to um, place with with biological family Mm -hmm. whenever possible. But I don't know what Hawaii's child protection law says. It sounds like Hawaii is the same. But in this case, there were family members, again, like a a grandma that uh, actually is a social worker and works with families that would have taken them in a heartbeat. But she had been estranged from her son for a certain amount of time, you know, because of drug use and issues Mm -hmm. and just wasn't given that opportunity. And Mm -hmm. the children were literally adopted out and she didn't know that that was happening. And so at any rate, I mean, there's lots of issues here, obviously, lots of issues here. Uh, Yeah, Um, definitely. There's an anonymous source that had apparently um, been concerned about Ariel's well-being for a while and had Mm -hmm. been uh, taking video of her uh, as they could because they felt like she was being abused. And there's a video circulating on the internet. I'm not going to play it here, uh, but I will share with you uh, that it's on YouTube and you can find it if you'd like to. The uh, You can find it. It's called My Kalua, K-A-I-L-U-A. Okay. And it is a video of the family getting out of a car and walking into what looks like maybe Walmart. Mm-hmm. And she is visibly dragging one of her legs and is walking way behind the rest of the family in this really busy parking lot. And that doesn't mean she was an abused kid, but this is just one of quite a few uh, records that people had been noticing. There was some dust up with the kindergarten and they pulled her out of kindergarten and started homeschooling her. And she's had two injuries that required a hospital visit and a CPS visit here in the last two years since she's been in their home. Mm. So there are some concerns. Uh, yeah, you obviously. Know, the other part of that is that the bio family is very upset because this dad has two uh, assault felonies on his record and was allowed wow. to... Uh, was adopt allowed children, to adopt? allowed to foster and adopt. Yeah. That is, ooh, that would not happen in Idaho. Yeah. That's the, the, they would really like to know how this family was vetted and allowed to adopt children. And it, well, okay, let me, let me rephrase that. If they had been assaults against children, it would have definitely not happened. Uh huh. Depending on the situation, if it was a bar fight, you know, something Mm -hmm. where with a group of people, all adults, Mm -hmm. it's possible that they could have reviewed that and, and passed that and said yes, but Mm -hmm. yikes, that's a big yikes. It is, it is. And mom, it sounds like had a drug charge too, that she went through drug court to resolve. So, well, I mean, you know, drug charges often are not enough to, you know, if a person is clean at the time of adoption or at the time of fostering, it's not necessary. It's not a given. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of the gist of it. There's lots of red flags. There's absolutely no information about what's going on. Part of the challenge is that uh, the police have been unwilling to really discuss the case with the bio family because they're just the bio family and They don't have legal rights to this child, you know, and so they aren't getting any information, but they are the ones on the news. You know, they're the ones that are talking. They're the ones leading search parties, having vigils. They're the ones that are, you know, kind of uh, taking the lead here, but they aren't receiving any information. Though Mm -hmm. news sources that are reaching out are getting the same, uh, the same response. There's just Mm -hmm. nothing to say. And so that's kind of where this case uh, sits at this point. I have major concerns that these parents knew she would go out and sleep in the yard alone at night and they hadn't secured their house in a way to make sure that she couldn't do that. Can Can you you imagine imagine going to bed at night? Yeah. Being comfortable with the idea that your six-year-old, five-year-old 
could be going outside and sleeping outside? No, no, absolutely not. No, I'd be installing be... a um uh, a a lock that was like clear at the top of the yeah. door where a kid couldn't reach it to make sure that they couldn't get outside at night. I mean, I would definitely not be comfortable with this. That's one of the big questions people are asking is if that is true and, and she had a propensity for doing that, what were you doing about it? Because that's yeah. not normal. That's no. not okay at all. That is not safe at all. No. So the Kaluas are due in court next month in November. Oh, well, actually this month now it's November 1st uh, to adopt the baby. And there is a big petition going on. There's protests happening. You know, people saying they shouldn't be adopting any more kids until we know what happened to this one. Well, and they will probably postpone that adoption, I particularly would where they've so. actually pulled the children from the house. Mm -hmm. That's unlikely to go forward until there is a clear resolution here. See, I would think so as well. It doesn't seem like that's right. This case is troubling. I'm not saying that the parents did anything to her. Or they didn't. I mean, you know, we don't know. This is really preliminary stuff. But... You know, she has been missing now for six weeks, six weeks. Oh, my God. And, but it does feel a little uh, Orin and uh, Orson Westish, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so, why people are so upset, you know, because when you've got a child that's disappeared, the family doesn't seem to be cooperating. They aren't really doing anything, uh, you know, along those lines. Though I do, they, they did help. I mean, of course they helped search and, you know, they, they were involved that way, but uh, there's just a lot of communication frustration happening. And then to hear mm -hmm. about that criminal background is concerning. And, you know, there's just, there, there's a lot of uh, big challenges here, really complex challenges here. It feels to me like they probably have an attorney who has said, don't say anything. I believe that's true because he's the only one that's been responding to the press. Yeah, I, yeah, I just feel like they've just been, um, and the thing is, if they don't know anything and there isn't anything to know, what are they supposed to say? Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and I do have concerns of, I, I understand where the birth family is coming from to some extent, but why are they, I mean, are they using this as their platform, you know, because they're mad that these kids have been adopted out? Like, this right. is so it, It's dicey. pretty complex. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. But at the end of the day, what we have is a missing six-year-old. Yeah. That uh, somehow mm. left the house or was taken from the house or something entirely different. That's, you know, what police and the FBI are working on finding out. So... Oh. Of course, this is it is our MMIW case for the week. Uh, we've never done one out of Hawaii before. No, we haven't. No, we haven't. And I'm sure there are some. I'm Plenty. certainly Plenty. To, keep, to keep an yeah. eye on. Um, it, is, it is strange that there were other children in the house. You know, I mean, it doesn't really see stand out like a stranger abduction so much. Mm-hmm. Um, and those are, you know, not unheard of, but pretty rare. Yeah. Whew. Yikes. Yeah. That, that just, oh, curdles my blood for that little girl. Me too. It's certainly one to be aware of. And of course, we'll add this to our list and keep an eye on this case and hope that at some point there's some resolution here. It is very sad. Very sad. Yeah, it yeah. certainly is. Yikes. All righty. Well, that is it for this one. So we will be back tomorrow with another case. We'll be back th Wednesday with another case. We'll be back Wednesday night with case updates. And there are a bunch of mm -hmm. paranormal these days. Yeah. And then we'll be back Thursday night with uh, the Psychic Hour. And of course, both of those live streams are at 7 p.m. Uh, Mountain Time. So we'll be here all week. What can I say? We surely <laughs> <will>. <laughs> All righty, guys, this has been another production of True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. Take care. Bye, guys.